I will honor to speak to you today. I will address the intrigue question. Why are Netflix, YouTube and Amazon facing challenges in Norway? The agenda is as follows. I'll start with an overview of the Norwegian media market, then look at TV reception and TV providers, the Norwegian TV companies, the global players, and the competition of people's time and wallets. The Norwegian media market is a digital mature market. This slide shows the daily reach of the largest media groups and platforms from 1995 to 2022. Since 2010, the use of TV, newspapers, magazines, to which extend radio, has been greatly reduced, while increased number of people using internet and mobile content daily. Both the Norwegian media industry and the Norwegian uh, people have therefore undergone a digital transformation. The population has been uh, on a digital journey, which becomes especially evident when we look at the significant increase in the use of online newspapers, streaming, and podcasts. 73% now stream daily, 72% read uh, uh, Norwegian newspapers online, and 19% listen to podcasts. I have presented these figures at several international conferences and checked various sources, and I have not found any country in the world which has a so high digital consumption. Therefore, I often say, look to Norway. Daily reach for TV channels have decreased from 81% in 12, uh, 2012 to 59% in this year. During the same period, streaming grew from 27% to 73%, meaning there are now more people streaming than watching TV. The combined consumption of TV and streaming is at 93% daily. Uh, Norwegians have a very high access to digital media equipment. 99% have internet, 95% have smartphone, 86% have TV connected to the internet, 60% have a smart TV, and a quarter of the population owns fitness bands, smart speakers, and smart watches. Therefore, it's not surprisingly that we also lead when it comes to subscription of ASFOD. A total of 83% have at least one ASFOD service uh, in the last quarter. And the average of the entire population is 3.4. One reason we are on top of the world of rankings, even ahead of our Scandinavian neighbors, is that Norwegian have relatively high income thanks to our oil revenues. Well, TV reception and TV providers, a turbulent market with many players. 55% are cable TV connection to watch TV today. 32% uses the internet to watch TV, which is an increase from 21% in 2020. Only 6% have satellite dishes in 2023, which is a halving compared to 2020. More people now don't have TV reception. Consequently, there are now more people uh, without TV reception and satellite dishes than in 2020. This chart shows the percentage of different forms of TV reception by age. Cable TV and satellite are more, much more prevalent among those over 70 years. And 72% of the elderly have cable TV to watch TV. Those under 30 years more frequently have internet access to watch TV, and 16% of them do not have a standard TV reception. A whole of 46% of those under 30 uses the internet to watch TV, and there's also differences between households with low and high incomes. Uh, both Altibox and Telenor TV have strengthened their market position since 2020. 23% have Altibox, Telenor TV 19%, Telia 16, Rikstv 8, Alente 7, and Nexcantel 2%. People over 70 years more often have TV providers uh, to obtain TV reception, while many of the younger ones don't have TV reception. All TV providers therefore have a higher distribution among the elderly than among the younger ones. The exception is Nexcantel, which has a higher distribution among younger ones 
than among the elderly. Telia and Alente are relevant stronger among those with lower household income compared to those with higher income. 86% report that they have an ability to connect uh, TV sets to the internet, compared to 48% in 2017. 60% have a smart TV, which is more than double the number from six years ago. 32% have a game console, 31% Apple TV, 28% uses Chromecast to connect to the TV set. In addition to connecting to the TV set to watch TV via video, you can also watch via tablets, PC, mobile phones, and other screens. The Nordic region has been a hotbed for innovation and competition when it comes to streaming services. National broadcasters recognized the potential of shift towards digital streaming started early on, way back in 2003. And the core TV2, Viaplay, and Warner Brothers Discovery entered the fray. They sought to differentiate themselves for providing unique content and, of course, sport. This early adoption and continuous evolution have made the Nordic region one of the most advanced and competitive markets for streaming services. The diversity of offerings and focus on local as well as international contents had ensured that consumers in these countries are a wide variety of choices. It is often cheaper to have a broadband uh, with TV channels than just broadband. Many TV and broadband companies also offer streaming services either for free or for very low prices. This means that the, uh, the Norwegian TV companies' streaming services have a very high distribution through various providers. Norwegian TV companies started early to launch streaming services with unique Norwegian content. Enerco TV was established as early as 2003, and TV2 introduced its streaming services in 2005. All of the companies offer unique Norwegian content in entertainment and sport. They also have important sport rights, such as Olympics, winter sport, athletics, and exclusive rights to broadcast the English Premier League, Champions League, and national football. They also have a range of English language series and movies, as well as content from our Nordic neighbors. This means that overall they offer a diverse and in some cases unique content that global companies like Netflix and Amazon don't have. Since 2018, Norwegian companies have used the word most sophisticated TV and video measurement. They also have access to comprehensive consumer metadata as well as their own data. This provides them with deeper and broader insight than, for example, Netflix. As a result, they can make more informed and strategically decisions compared to the global players. Countermedia launches the official TV and video measurement in 2018. And here you see the overall development for time spent on TV on the in total, linear TV, playback, and broadcasted video on demand. However, the total TV, on, uh, TV uh, consumption has not reduced as much as previously. Time spent on linear TV is decreasing and is, and is reduced the total consumption. Bevo has increased from eight minutes to 20 minutes, and we now spend more time on Bevo than watching TV programs by play, uh, playback. Uh, so far this year, 67% of the TV consumption is linear, 20% in be is Bevod, and 30% is playback. Bevod increases by 3 minutes, while live reduces by 5 minutes. Bevod is only for NRK, TV2, and Warner Brothers, and does not include foreign uh, uh, services in this slide. The total time spent on the uh, Bevod for the entire population has increased from 8 minutes uh, in 2018 to 20 minutes so far this year. For those under 30, the time spent on Bevod increases until 2021. But after that, the growth has stagnated. Those over 50 have experienced a significant increase in Bevod consumption in the last two years. However, there is a negative trend among the 20-year-olds. One explanation for this could be that the viewing at Bevod and News was particularly high 
during the worst of the pandemic in 2020 and 2021. Through marketing, product development, and agreements with, with various TV providers, such as Altibox, Telia, the Norwegian TV companies have a increased their distribution by 80% since 2020. The public service broadcaster NRCO receives a free as a daily reach of 26%. Daily coverage for all Norwegian companies have increased since 2020. TV2 Play has increased by 80% over the past three years, with a daily usage of 18% so far this year. Via Play has 12% and Discovery plus 6%. These are very impressive uh, numbers compared to how national TV companies manage against global streaming services in other countries. The global play, uh, players face greater challenges in smaller language markets, especially in developed media markets like Norway. 64% subscribe to Netflix, and they are still the leading uh, streaming service in Norway. However, they now face stronger competition from an increased number of international players. HBO Max, Disney Plus have grown by 80% since 2020. Amazon Prime also have twice as much subscriptions as three years ago. But they might struggle to increase users if they don't offer more varied content tailored to Norwegian viewers. But if they secure attractive sport rights like the Premier League, they could become a serious competition competitor to Netflix. Of the global services, uh, YouTube and Netflix are the most used, but there are fewer, uh, uh, fewer people using YouTube and Netflix this year than three years ago. In recent years, an increased number of global players have established themselves in Norway, and HBO Max and Disney now have a daily reach of 11%. Figures from Cantamida's TVOA measurement shows that the viewing time for Netflix has decreased from 13 minutes to 6 minutes from the peak of 2020 so far this year. This is a halving. The viewing time is decreasing in all age groups ex except for those 70 years plus. The decline in viewing time is most pronounced among those under 40 years, and the time those under 30 years in, in this year is only one third of what it was in 2020. Since the peak year in 2020, Netflix has faced increased strong competition from other streaming services. Uh, figures from Cantamina's TVW measurement also shows that the viewing time for YouTube has decreased from 21 minutes in 2020 to 25 minutes in 2023. Compared to the peak year 2020, the viewing time on YouTube for those aged 20 to 29 are significantly decreased, while it increases for those aged 40 to 69, as those under 30 increase use of other services. The time spent on YouTube is thus reduced. An analysis from Shufiri Timer and Cantor's interviews show that the younger age groups, especially the teenagers, spend much more time on TikTok because it directly competes with YouTube's shorter videos. Here we see the use of TikTok and YouTube throughout the day among 18 to 29 years in this year. Young people use TikTok and YouTube all day long, especially from 9 to 11 p.m. On average, those under 30 spend 46 minutes on YouTube and 45 minutes on TikTok. They therefore spend as much time on TikTok than as on YouTube. Given that TikTok is a relatively new platform, it is evident that YouTube has lost its significant amount of the younger people to significant viewing time to TikTok. Competition for people's time and wallets. A race that acquires deep insight. In, in, in third quarter this year, we spent six hours and 20 minutes on media daily. 38% of the time is spent on TV or video streaming. Over 95% of the time spent on TV channels 
is spent on Norwegian channels. And collectively, the two largest TV channels, NRK1 and TV2 Direct, account for about 60% of the time. The four uh, Norwegian TV companies account for around 30% of the streaming time. YouTube has the largest share of streaming by 28%, followed by Netflix at uh, 17%, Disney at 8, HBO at like, Max at 7. This is how competitive the Norwegian TV market, TV and streaming market is. Monthly media expenditure on newspapers, magazines, music and s -word. The average monthly expense on Norwegian s -word is 200. 284 krona. Since 2020, we have been spending increasingly more on streaming, but the consumption has leveled off in the last year. There are reduced consumption of newspaper, magazines, and on music streaming since the first half of 2022. And therefore, the total consumption of paid media content has decreased from since 2022. We now wish to examine the development among those with household income lower than 700,000 krona per year. Those with household income below 700,000 krona have reduced their media consumption by 40% in third quarter this year compared to the fall of 2022. The consumption of s has decreased by 30% since the fall of 2022. The decline is even stronger among those with lower income who are under 40 years. This group are major consumer of paid media content and they have reduced the consumption by 50% since the fall of 2021. As more young people become cord cutters and look to save money, they often cancel the subscription for shorter periods, share access with others, and understanding these behavior be crucial for all export services. There are significantly demographic differences between the various iAVOD and SVOD streaming services. Women, women tend to use Netflix and TV2 Play more, while men use YouTube, Amazon, and especially Twitch more frequently. Individual aged 18 to 29 generally use more services particularly YouTube, HBO, Disney Plus, and Twitch. There are also slight differences between those with high and low income. In general, those with higher income use more services, especially NRK TV, Netflix, and TV2 Play. Norwegian are very news-orientated and stand out from other countries. NRK and TV2 which broadcast news, therefore high, have an advantage since there is a highly interest in watching news and current affairs, documentaries and crime. There are significantly uh, differences in content preference among different groups. While men prefer action and science, science fiction and fantasy, women leads towards drama, reality and romance. This is probably means that a lot of arguing when mum and dad have to, show, have to show something to watch together at the big screen in the living room. The younger, the older, the generation, the, the younger and older generation also have different preferences. And for this reason, they may show different streaming services. And if they live in the same house, they're likely to use separate screens. Uh, there are also some differences in preferences between those with low and high income, uh, which is influence, which influence which streaming service they will opt for. Summary and future perspectives. To summarize, we will look at the ranking of the most used s services in Norway. The streaming top list for last quarter shows the percentage of the population that subscribes to the streaming services. This will be still, uh, there's still growth in the Norwegian streaming market from last year compared to this year. TV2 Play is increasing is in most among the major services, while Bit, Bitbox and Apple 
TV Plus are growing the most among the smaller ones. It's worth noting that three of the six largest paid services are owned by Norwegian com uh, TV companies. So, back to the main question. Why are Netflix, YouTube, and Amazon struggling in Norway? The Norwegian media market is a highly digital, mature landscape, making it challenges for newcomers to establish a foothold even for global giants like Amazon. Norwegian TV companies have achieved widespread distribution for the streaming services throughout collaboration with various TV and broadband providers. NRK and TV2 are early adopters and offering streaming services featuring unique Norwegian content. This access to distinct data and insight has allowed them to make well-informed and strategic decisions. Even global platforms encounter high, heightened challenges in these linguistic markets, particularly in developed media markets like Norway. Since 2020, Netflix viewing has plumped by 50%, with the steepest decline observed in individuals under 30 years. Meanwhile, YouTube viewership has seen a 20% reduction since the same year, most notably among the teenagers. YouTube's viewing time is being taken by TikTok. The competi uh, competition of people's time and wallet intensifies among the food providers as people private finance come under pressure. It requires extensive data and competitors to deep local insight to create targeted content to various demographics. Relying solely on its own data is not sufficient. Thank you for the attention. <laughs>